Hi, I'm Brian from iWire. We're working on Bucky's swap here and we want to show you step by step how to remove the dash and the harness so that you can put our harness in when you're done. So the first step is we're going to remove the VIN plate and the cowl piece uh, so you can get to the bolts for the dash. Then we're going to remove the lower pieces and the center console. Then we're going to remove the upper dash, the bar, and then the boxes. So we'll start with the upper cowl piece. So a little pick, just to get it started, you don't want to damage your dash, and then you can just slide it along. Wow, this dash really never has been apart. So happy. So I got a bucket here. I would suggest that each section that you take, you put the bolts with the thing that you took it out, so that you know which bolts go where. I know where all the bolts go, so I'm just gonna put them in a bucket, but when we install it, I will show you which bolts go where. I also have a little pick tool to grab uh, button heads. And then there are mm -hmm. two inside here. Looks like one, oh, both of them are gone. Okay. So there's also one over here. That spot. Screwdrivers, basic screwdriver. Sometimes a long screwdriver will be helpful. Not necessarily required though. So it's just nice to get down in here. Got a big helper. There we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> All the bits are going in here. I just installed this. Oh, go ahead and take that off. Sweet. Thank you. All right. Anytime, All right. man. Anytime. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime. Appreciate you. Now it's done. Anytime. Thanks to this guy. the driver's side we're going to start with the bezel around the cluster wow the cluster and then the under tray so stubby screwdriver this can go up and down i pushed it down and then just pulled There's one, two, three bolts. Stubby screwdriver for the top one. And then there are plugs on the back. Kinda gotta reach in there.
and then there's this. And unfortunately, you must cut this. There isn't a, there isn't anything to not. Just cut it with as much length as you can get to make it easier to connect later. So we had to cut this plug out because Subaru hardwires it. Um, instead of just splicing it back together, so if you ever have to remove it, you can. I put a little connector on it. Uh, but you can always splice it back together. It's not a big deal. So I put the lower part of the dash back in. I can slide it through and then plug it in. And then the last piece that everybody screws with is the OBD2 port. So it's coming in here, Bob. Flathead, there's an opening. Can you see that? Push. So there's a clip there, and you gotta push on it, and then it pops right out. Yes. All right, so we're gonna take the glove box out. The glove box, oh, there's a lot of stuff in here. What do we find? Water. <laughs> this is pretty typical, actually. Oh yeah, hey, thanks, cameraman. Uh, oh, STI? Dang, STI, okay, cool, cool. <laughs> no way around that. CBD gummies, get fired up. Uh, wheel locks and other things I think we can leave in there. Alright, we're good now. So, uh, inside here, you're gonna have bolts here, here. There's missing one there, and one there. And then there's one there, one under. So, easiest thing to do is start over here. On the back of this, make sure they're on there, or else it won't snap in. Midi pod here. So the next step is going to be take out this trim piece. It should just kind of peel out. this attached undo these cables at the boxes and be really careful they are very breakable Don't take it apart from this end. Take it apart from that end.
defrost and uh, <laughs> hazard. I'm gonna unplug those. So basically, I'm unplugging the steering column or the gauge cluster. will come unplugged so that the gauge cluster yes, the can stay in the car be because there's a bolt on the back side that you really can't get to. Then we'll take the whole thing out as one piece with this attached to that. So just a 10 millimeter socket. Uh, I've got a bendy head on there. You could probably just do it with a basic one. It doesn't really matter. This is the bolt that goes in there. The trick is the bolts underneath here, there are a couple that hold the dash bar to the airbag, which is attached to the dash itself. You can see underneath there. on this side of the car. Uh, this one goes to a little module. Leave the module attached to the harness. It's gonna pop out. Basically just get rid of the parts of the harness that are attached to the bar so you can get the bar out. Then we'll worry about the boxes, then we'll worry about the harness itself. So we just need to disconnect things like this, bolts, big pieces. So just make sure you don't break these clips. Pop out. You can undo zip ties like this. So that comes out the back for all the stereo and AC stuff. To get this airbag harness separated from everything else is to unplug this. All these airbags have similar connectors. They're a little tricky to work with. So to get them, they're actually a double lock. You gotta push the tab down, and then push this tab down, and then push this lock out, and then it'll slide out. Voila, voila! The next part is the airbag. These are Torx bolts. You can technically do them with vice grips, grip, and turn them out if uh, you don't have a Torx, but it's a Torx 40 with the opening in the middle.
there are three openings, but only one is used. Just so when you put it back in, don't worry. So we're going to take out the fuse box and a couple wiring harness pieces under here so that we can get access to the bolts on that side. So now we're gonna pull the connectors apart for the steering column to the harness. Uh, technically, you could leave these attached uh, after you pull the dash bar, but it makes more sense to just do it now while we're under here. We're going to take, we're going to disconnect the steering column from the dash bar. To do that, there are two bolts on top down here that we're going to get to from the bottom, and then we're going to put a jack underneath to hold the steering column in place. That's the other side of that box, so that's the AC line. Normally you do that when you're pulling the engine, but if for some reason you're pulling the dash before the engine, make sure that you get this unbolted and disconnected, but also these two hoses. Because those are coolant hoses, they're gonna go that white box. So if these are still attached to the engine, you'll never get that box out. So now that we know that's disconnected and these are disconnected, you can pull those boxes out. Yeah, this is out of the way. So yeah, this is out of the way. And then that should just kind of wiggle out. Also to note, there is a drain hose in the engine bay side, but that's not going to be a problem. You're just going to pull. I'm going to make sure I did the right 
bowl, right? It looks like it's gonna come. Let's go with it. Hold on. I may not have done the right bowl. No. Okay. Here we go. Hey! Lesson learned. If it doesn't come out easily, don't pull on it. Thanks, sir. So you got to get it there. You oh, go. there we go. So yeah, so, so kind of want to dislodge the bottom a little bit and then wiggle the top. There you yeah. go. Still kind of connected down there. Yeah, so there's a little lip on the bottom that you want to clear and it makes it a little bit easier to come out. No, no. What? You're going to dump coolant all over your car. You still have coolant in them. Oh. <laughs> and it's plugged in still over here. Oh, there's a bolt. Hang on. I, 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 you jumped ahead. So there's one more bolt over here. I got it. I get it. I get it. Take me. Don't forget this one, everyone. So, lesson learned. Don't, don't yank. Don't yank. There's one bolt right there. Right there. One screw. Yeah. And then also, don't dump coolant in your car. Don't dump coolant in your car. Because that's not cool. It's not cool. Uh, ECU plate off and then we're gonna finish unplugging things and then we're gonna unplug that side and pull everything this way and then yank it out of the car and we're done. This attached, this bracket attached, just unplug the bulkhead harness from where it hits the rear harness. before we pull it that way, but we'll finish inside first. So let's switch that. Undo these two bolts for the hood release so we can get these harnesses onto that side and then we're gonna unplug everything else and we'll be ready to pull it.
socket, leave it attached. Just un undo those. There's the, the plugs on the on that other one, on this one, are kind of hard to work with, so it's easier just to take that thing. Well, These are not. The, it's the main relay and the starter relay. Yes, it is. It's all alarmed, related. Last step is disconnecting whatever's left in the uh, cabin here, or in the engine bay. So we're going to unplug this. It's for the RS02 sensor harness. You're not going to reuse that. These are the trans plugs. You are going to reuse these. So pull this out, you don't need it. So the trans plugs can stay in, vehicle speed sensor harness can stay in, it will get reused. And then you can push this group back into the cabin. And then there's a couple connections over here, starter was already done. So we're gonna get the last few out this way. Brake master cylinder. Uh, ABS is down here. Yes. That is connected. Two ground bolts. Some cars have one, some cars have two. AC dryer came out, airbag, or sorry, ABS down here, and then on this side, starter, brake master cylinder, ABS, and the grounds. Once this is all disconnected, it can just all go through. And then if you have a friend inside the cabin, hey friend, yeah. do you want to pull that harness out? The big one. The one coming towards you. The whole thing. She'll come inside, yeah. Scoot inside and have him pull it. You just gotta unhook the white boxes. Bingo. 
and you just need to pop that off with a little screwdriver. Oh, just pull. It's yeah. not gonna get it. It'll come off. Yeah. Muscles. All right, that's about the extent of my uh, wiring harnessing. I'm gonna turn it over to the real pro. I think it did break. All I did was kind of feed it through here. I mean, without me, it probably wouldn't have gotten done. No, for sure. I mean, you certainly need to bring in the ringer at the end. Yeah. To really handle it. They call me the closer. Yeah. So just let me know when you want me to turn this like little spot right here. Okay. You got right, it. Put the little thing you fired in, in there. I'm about ready. All right, I'll be back. There you go. You're good. You don't need any of that, right? It's all just recycle. This is all junk. This is all junk. Stereo shenanigans. So old. This is new. So we'll put that one in where that one was. I'm keeping this. Don't yeah. Nice no, yeah, 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 like yeah. Pretty. <laughs> That's pretty and I'll nice. Put that back in the corner as a tray. Clean. So we'll put that one in. Back. Uh, let's lay out the old person. So just so you get a grip on what exactly Brian does when he gets a harness, this is a factory harness that we just took out. So basically all this kind of stays the same up to the ECU part. Yeah. And then after the ECU is where he changes it like here. Everything happens in this general region, which means that everything over here, which is all the stuff that tucks back to the car, is exactly as it was. So your dash, your headlights, your taillights, your doors, all that's gonna work exactly as it did before. All we did was change the ECU and engine plugs, so you put your new ECU and engine in your old car. Yep. 